I am so excited about today's video. In today's video, we ask our driver's partners what they recommend and how they have a successful marriage or relationship with a truck driver. What do they do? What's their secret? With drivers being on the road for two, three, four weeks at a time, how do they keep up with their relationship? What do they do to have a successful marriage for years and years to come? Because we're in the midst of COVID-19, we have decided to conduct the interviews via Zoom. Well, let's get started. It is a huge, huge departure from anything you've ever known. I don't know. Now that we've kind of settled into it, it's 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 we've got this neat routine, and it it just seems like it's been just it's comfortable. So it, it just feels like it's not really all that different anymore. It's definitely different. It's uh, I feel it's lonely at times. I keep myself busy, but um, you worry. You worry about you know what they're doing. Are they okay? When are they coming home? My biggest thing that actually kind of irritates me sometimes is, um, unless I know for sure he's planned to come home, we really, I don't really know what I'm doing. So I might make plans for a weekend and all of a sudden unexpectedly he's coming home. Well, I want to see him. So then I might usually change those plans. That's a little difficult. Like I feel like sometimes I sacrifice a little more. Unless he has told them I want to be home this specific weekend, I generally don't find out until I could be anywhere from Thursday night to Friday night. It can be lonely. Um, you definitely learn to do an awful lot of stuff by yourself. You know, there's um, things like, you know, I, I don't think he's been home on my birthday yet you know, since he started two years ago, which is which is different. But, you know, we do like video calls and stuff like that. But, um, you know, you, you learn you can't necessarily rely on having them home, that's for sure. So a long time ago, he was like with a different company, he was gone for weeks and weeks of time. Um, when he started with ET, he was gone about weekly. And then about a couple months ago, we tried a month. Neither one of us liked that at all. So now it's about every two, two and a half weeks. Um, he tries to stay home about three to four days when he's gone that long. He tends to, tends to stay out for two to three weeks, if not more. He was out for seven weeks at the beginning of COVID, which was absolutely horrible. Many resets on the road. When he's home, he's usually home for 36 to 48 hours, and then he's, then he's gone again. There's on the weekends, I've been on the phone with him for an hour and a half at a stretch. Um, you know, and then when I'm working, he'll, if he can, he'll call me while I'm on my drive on my way into work, or, and then he'll call me on my two 15 minute breaks, my half hour lunch, and usually on the way home, and then at some point throughout the evening. So we, we probably, if you round it all up, speak between maybe, an hour and a half to three or four hours. I do, I do feel like there's enough communication. We talk morning, like we say good morning, we talk at night. Um, once we've had our coffee, there's usually a phone call before I go off and, and do my job. Um, if there's something new that comes up in the day that's exciting, I'll call him and tell him. Um, nothing really new and exciting happens for him really, but <laughs> so, you know, but if there's something funny, then he'll call and tell me most days uh, when he gets out onto the West Coast, it becomes more difficult because of the four hour time difference. That's a little harder to, you know, if it's eight o'clock here, it's four o'clock out there in the morning. So it's a little diff more difficult, you know. He makes a point of like a, my morning break, my afternoon break, my lunch. He always makes a point of calling if he's not dealing with something at a dock, which is which is really sweet. There's not a lot of face-to-face. -face. It's it's a lot of phone calls, a lot of texting when he's sitting at docks. There's, you know, sending 
goofy stuff through Messenger. <laughs> oh my gosh, some of the things he sends me are just amusing. I don't know where he finds it all. He, he does uh, speech to text through his headset, which with autocorrect becomes very amusing sometimes. <laughs> Um, or, you know, while he's sitting at a dock, we'll text, we'll do Facebook Messenger and stuff like that. So so we'll video chat, not every day, but um, a couple times a week in the evening when he's shut down. Um, if he's away for the weekend, then we talk more on video chat, probably a couple times over the weekend. He'll be done like on Thursday or Friday and then go back out Sunday or Monday. But mostly phone calls. Um, if he's in good Wi-Fi, we'll do FaceTime, which is really nice because then I get to see him instead of just hear him. There's been a few times where he's had his phone up on uh, on his mount on the dash and he's just turned it to a FaceTime video and flipped the camera. So I, I'm like basically driving down the road with him, which that's kind of neat too. I really enjoy that. There have been a few times where I've been able to come out in the truck with him um, for, you know, three or four days. I've been able to get a few days off work, so he'll do a short local run. I got over to Newfoundland with him once, which was wonderful because, number one, I've always liked to, wanted to see Newfoundland, and number two, I get to spend almost a week with him. So that was really cool. I run a small dog walking and pet sitting company. Um, so I, I usually start my job, well, it could be anywhere between 8.30 and 9.00. And I'm done probably about 1.30 or 2 right now. There's not much pet sitting going on because of COVID. Um, but I did get a lot of dog walks back with new clients that are a lot of them are nurses and teachers as well. Because I'm gone probably the morning and then back just not much longer after lunch. I work uh, 40 hours a week. Um, I work in a sign shop. I build signs. So or actually do mostly the files for the CNC equipment and stuff in the building and run some of it. Um, we have two laser cutters, so I get to play with lasers all day sometimes. <laughs> My youngest is 17. The oldest is 22 or 23. My oldest is uh, just in her last year of school. They're, they're quite independent, yeah. It's not been easy. We're a blended family, so... Over the years, I mean, if he wasn't home on time and it was his girl's weekend to come, they might miss out on, on seeing him. Um, I think the kids have, have really missed having him here sometimes, but he's pretty good about phoning them. Um, they video chat, like now that the technology is so much better, there's a lot more options. Like if he's having, or if one of them are having a bad day, I sometimes would send a message, hey, you know, this happened. And then he'd call them and talk to them about it. I think for me, way back um, when the kids were younger, I found it really hard because I felt like I was doing everything. And, and back then I ran a home daycare. So it was kids, kids, kids in my life. And um, not much of a break. And um, I used to kind of resent that. I would resent the fact that I felt at that time, oh, you know, you're in your truck and you just have to drive and I have so many things to do. Um, the biggest thing that helped is, is I started asking for help on the weekends. Like, you know, can I have, can you help me with this so I can go take a break? And now it's just automatic. I don't even really have to ask. He comes home, he cooks on the weekends, he'll clean something. He'll tell me, go sit down. Yeah. The, the first, the first little bit of it was pretty rough making the adjustment of, of, you know, not having him around. It, it, it got very lonely. He would, when when he got a good long run, he'd get me involved in helping plan the route out and everything like that and, and figuring out what truck stops we were going to stop at and everything like that. And basically, I'm his absent co-driver, <laughs> as he puts it. I've gotten involved in a lot of it. I learned a lot more about the hours of service than I think any human should know. I find what's really hard and I almost feel cheated is when he comes home in the middle of the week and I've got to go to work in the day, you know, in the middle of the day. I've got to go to work all day long and um, so I feel like I'm, I just miss out on that time. As the kids are, are getting older, I'm finding I have a little more time to myself and, you know, you, you see some posts and I know that posts are not necessarily always how everyone's life is, but you know, you'll see 
like a husband and wife doing something or they have morning coffee together that kind of thing like those are the things i miss and sometimes still struggle with all the time all the time especially with right now with covid going on and now it's winter like he's just on his way back from alberta right now and there were snowstorms and actually he went over he went over into bc he went over the coquihalla pass when it was like slippery and crazy accidents all over the place and i worry about that a lot because the next thing you know there's five or six of these big trucks off the road and you know you get 80, 100,000 pounds of vehicle, that is a lot of inertia. You know, he worries about my state of mind and you know, the, the kids, he worries about them too. I actually come from a trucking company. My dad was a trucker, my grandfather, my uncle. Um, so I'm, the worrying's always been there. Um, so I do worry about Brian, especially in the winter. He does worry about me. I go hiking and jogging. Um, I wear a Fitbit as well. And I keep, like we both have our Find My Friends app on the phone him because if something ever happened i can see where he is it actually gives me a peace of mind to know okay he's parked he's just not answering because you know he's sleeping or he's in the bathroom or it's not because he's in an accident um he has you know he can see me online and the kids and i are, and all of us are like on the same one um so that let's say i go for a hike and i don't answer then they can kind of find where i am some people look at it as invasive like oh wow you you're tracking him. No, I, I don't actually look at it a lot. It's literally if I've called him or what I'll even do is I won't call him because I see, uh, you know, I know with the weather that there's a, you know, that it's, there's a storm and I see that he's still driving. So I'm not going to bother him. Or, you know, it's 7 a.m. in the morning and he hasn't moved and he told me he needed to get up at five. Maybe he slept in, which has happened. And then I've called him and he's like, oh crap, thank you. You know, and then up he gets and he goes. We always try to find something to do. We always try to go on a small date, whether it be a walk um, or for dinner, for lunch, just something or just for us. And then, you know, we spend time with, with the kids. Um, we'll play a game. We watch a movie together. Um, the first night he comes home, we actually don't bother him. We, cause he needs to unwind because he used to been by himself in the truck, no noise. My house is very chaotic. We have three, four or five people living here at any time. Uh, we have four dogs, two cats. So <laughs> it's a lot to come out of your truck and have to work your way into this household. So we always don't really do much the first night. And then after that, he kind of, he's fine. And then we go on and do stuff together. We'll do a lot of running around together, you know, groceries, whatever it is we need to do. If the stuff needs to get done around the house, you make sure it gets done. Um, summertime, we go out on the bikes. We, we both ride motorcycles, so we'll, we'll go for good long rides. Actually, he's gotten my 17-year-old daughter hooked. Uh, she jumps on the back of his Harley with him and we go for rides and stuff, so. This time of year, we'll just, you know, grab the, grab the iPad or something, snuggle up and watch Netflix or a uh, prime video or whatever. He makes a point of it and so do I. You know, we we make the most of every moment that we have together. Like he wasn't a trucker when we first met, um, then he became a trucker and uh, you know, you just slip it back into it. You know how it is, you know how it's gonna go. Um, and the biggest thing is always having a life of your own is really important. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> that's always the thing because, you know, you talk to some people like, oh, truckers, they always cheat. And I'm like, no, I don't believe that all of them cheat. And I think that really, don't go looking, looking for something. But if, if you're not, if you're worried, you got to talk it out. It's the hugest thing. Ask questions. Um, reassurance is huge for me. Like, because, you know, there are times, of course, I'm going to feel insecure. And, and Brian's very good at reassuring me and like, look, no, you know, nothing. Um, this might be a little personal, but the way I look at it is if my husband comes home and he holds me the way he does when we're sleeping, I figure he's not cheating because generally if there was nothing there, they're not going to hold you like that. Really, trust is either there or it's not. At least that's that's my view of it and his too, right? We're, we're both very much like that, you know, and it's trust is something that's earned and not given either, you know, so... 
if you're a somewhat insecure person, you're not going to do well with somebody who's in trucking because you're going to be constantly worrying. Every morning I get a text when he's on the road that he's either he's gotten up and he's starting his pre-trip or he's rolling now or whatever. Every single morning, no matter what time it is, my time, you know, sometimes I get a text at, uh, you know, like three, four in the morning. But he every morning he lets me know when he's when he's had a note. Sometimes it's just rolling. Other times it's good morning. I'm up. I'm about to do my pre-trip. I guess it just depends on how his morning's going. But I get something. He'll usually text me just pulling into the dock, just back on the road again. And, I, and even just just that little tiny thing makes a, such a big difference. If you find something eventually, well then you deal with it then, but to constantly think your husband's cheating on you when he's not is just too brutal for your emotional state, really. You can't, I mean, you can't walk around accusing them either. Like imagine being on the road and, you know, they're just, one of the biggest things Brian says to me sometimes is, you know, so I'm like, oh, maybe you just don't want to be home this weekend. And he's like, you realize how like, I want to be home just as much, but this is my job. You know, due to our personalities, um, and some of this has just come with getting used to not seeing each other, is that we like our own time. Um, we're not afraid to be alone. Um, it's, it's not a bad thing to enjoy your own company. It's just trying to make sure that when you come home, you do have quality time. That's like hugely important. I have one of them, get in the truck yourself go on a trip with your husband or boyfriend and it gives you a really realistic view of how it is for them and the stresses that they're under so that you understand they already know what home is like for the most part you don't necessarily know what it's like for them and i've been in the truck with brian a few times well more than a few actually um and uh, i like it it's but i also see everything he has to deal with in a day uh, communication is another thing, like communication is huge, huge, huge in any relationship, but especially this because you just, you're living separate lives until you come together again. Literally, you've got to be flexible because <laughs> you're not, like, you're not going to be dealing with any hours known to any other human being, <laughs> really. When he's going to be coming back, when you're going to actually be able to talk to him. I mean, there's some runs where all he's doing is running all night long and then he's sleeping all day. That makes things difficult. And you gotta, you gotta be ready for those kind of weird things like that. Flexibility, I would say, is a good one. In a, you know, in, and that can be applied to so many aspects of the relationship. Sometimes when we, when we do meal prep or I'm doing it on my own, I'll uh, write little notes on the, the lids, like love you or be safe, have a great trucking day, things like that. <laughs> I'd, I'd be almost be inclined to say don't do it <laughs> but you know that's that's just the snap answer um you've gotta you've gotta be willing to give up a lot of what you think you would have with a relationship it's it's gonna be like nothing you've ever known um there's just you be prepared for missed birthdays and miss, you know, miss this, miss that, or, you know, I'm going to be home on Wednesday. Uh, no, truck broke down. I don't know when I'm going to be home, you know, and you've just got to be, you, you got to be ready for anything, really. If I don't think they're a strong person or that they could handle it, I might say, eh, maybe it's not for you. Um, but for most, for some women, I, it's, Again, for me, it just goes back to, you really need your own life um, and you need to keep busy. You can't be sitting here pining away and crying all the time for your husband. It's, you're just gonna be unhappy. And way back, that might've been me, um, but I learned to, basically, I just create my own set of friends, my own life, and I keep busy. Keeping busy is, is big and communication is, is huge as well. I have told him that as the kids get older, I would uh, like him to be home a little more, but that's not for like another few years. Um, or, you know, depending on what I'm doing at the time, maybe I can go out in the truck with him once a month or something, just so we have a little more time together than we have been most of our relationship. 
if you're a clingy kind of person that needs somebody around all the time, a relationship with a trucker is not for you unless he's one of those local guys that's home every night. Every phone conversation becomes the truck. Somehow that truck always gets into every single conversation. If it's not the truck, it's the dock. If it's not the dock, it's the dispatcher. If it's not the dispatcher, it's a shipper or a receiver. Like the, that, the trucking works its way into every single conversation. Trucking's not really a career, it's a lifestyle. Well, I mean, it's a career, but it's, it's also a lifestyle. And you've got to be able to embrace that lifestyle. Well, I hope this video was as interesting for you as it was for me. If you are thinking of getting yourself into a relationship with a truck driver, then use these tips on what you can do to better your relationship. If you're already married to one, then you already, you already know what you get yourself into. <laughs> and if you're already married to a trucker and we've missed something, please add a comment below. Let us know what to talk about in our next video. I'm Ronan and I'll catch you in the next one.